You think there's an ambush ahead and you stop the other vehicle? In charge of all of them to stop, sir, please! Bruno, we look the ambush for me. Bruno, we look at Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Bank series with your guy, Maestro Fisher, the debunker. But I don't know why do we say you're a guy. But today I don't want to take much ado, but I want to dive in straight to what you just saw. That is Foxton Media with their movie Mission to Rescue. So today I'll be looking at some few things that were not in order, or rather, according to me, they were not in order, or rather, they were not supposed to be there in the first place. But first of all, let me just give credit to Foxton Media for what they did, uh, for coming up with this whole movie of uh, Mission to Rescue. First of all, I like the handheld camera. I like the actor speaking in Somali. I mean, like, f uh, going to that extent for people to to speak a language, like Bilal Moura speaking in a language that is not, uh, we know is Moura and he's speaking Somali. I think that was a plus for me. It was uh, an extra effort that was done to have some special effects and uh, sound effects, though I still have an issue with it. And then there is a continuity, especially when the when the captain was sick from the beginning of the film, in the mid of the film, he still kept that narrative of a uh, uh, captain being sick and up to I think the end. Then we had again the hostage room, the hostages room having a blood splatter on the wall. I mean that was so real, having the the hanging robes uh, with blood. I, I felt that was so real to have such a scene. And it, it brought out the aspect of uh, what terrorists do when they uh, kidnap uh, people. So I like that one. Then there were the establishing shots. They had the best in my view. Uh, and I think with just that highlight, I don't want to say much. Let's just get straight to the movie. Now to the meaty part, to the juicy part of the movie. So let's start. I'll not be looking at the full movie, but I'll look at the half of it. And then I'll come and do part two so that I can look at it. So uh, join with me and bear with me with a long introduction. So first of all, what you just watched is, uh, is, an, is an attack at the end. So let me just, uh, you know, the movie, the movie I'll share it uh, here. Uh, it's on YouTube, so you can go and watch and compare my notes and, and what I said. So let's just watch. So uh, for me, uh, let's just continue and then I'll, I'll, I'll just give my comments about this uh, scene. So I want you to see and then... Now, this is a scene where the guy had stopped the police, a, a poli a, a, whatever, police, this is KDF troop. One went ahead and then I think it's stepped on ID or rather there was an ambush. but. The wrong thing about this scene was introducing introducing this Somali guy to stop the troops because even without him this scene would have been okay having the the, the, the first troop go and get an explosion and then this other stop and uh, wonder because they had already introduced the movie that is in between the Somali and Kenya border and you know that uh, terrorists put IEDs on the ground or whatever they dig the road and then they put the id so that uh, police cars can get exploded when they step on it so introducing this guy to come and warn them was not necessary now this is the reason why i'm saying it's not necessary just take the number of police who are here looking for him this is a one two three four about ten police which you can see in one shot and the guy disappeared at some and happy how can trained men miss one person in a tambarare place like a desert place someone disappears out of your side first of all I'll, I'll put this one as you can see five of them are in front of him and then some other four which you can see on the camera are in front of him in front of the guy who was who is uh, kneeling down and raising his arms like how can someone disappear a whole grown-up man disappear so for the script writers that scene was wrong introducing that guy he could have even just done the scene without him and it could have made sense so that one was a no for me so the way this scene was introduced 
uh first i started by saying oh we are on we are we are set we are doing this we are ready and then one trips a uh, cable and then it was like an ambush and like they started running then the shooting happening so if you can check in one of the scenes i noted that there was no blood splatter but i thought maybe that's just like uh the effects the effects there were no effects to make the scene look like there were blood splatter but why would you have a headshot and uh, there's no blood splatter so that's what i questioned because i didn't see that in this scene so it continued shooting and shooting and then uh that's when i realized later let me just rush straight to to some scene here the captain walking in an open place with holding a gun not withholding walking holding a gun <laughs> this scene in an open space I don't know what you are looking for like even you can check again what is he going after nothing you're just cooking in an open field and yet you're in a retreating area and someone attacks you from behind and you fight and as you can see they fought and did all that they could and uh well the fighting went on so that scene was not really necessary there are many things that i, I can't say about it but well it wasn't necessary to have the captain walk in a in a plain field to walk into a plain field so that someone can attack him from behind it would have rather caused him to be to start the fighting from a corner and then they can walk they can fight as they go to an open field that would have made sense for me now this scene was a mix-up of another scene uh, of another of another action which was happening and this is another guy called Faisal who was sneaking away from the Ashabab and he goes to uh, the sheikh's house and amid the shooting there is someone sneaking into someone's house and the mixing of those scenes did not really make sense for me because they looked like they were the same thing but they were not so for me i did not really buy that idea of mixing uh faisal uh, breaking into the sheikh's house and then having this uh, training going on now i'm saying training because i know what was happening this took me a while from minute 17 when the wire was stripped and the shooting started to minute 23rd there is when i realized like these guys were <laughs> on a training so minute 23 is uh when someone hinted that it was actually a training so just listen let me remind you why we are here Skills. So they're here to sharpen yeah. their skills. Yeah. So that's one of the parts. Then again, listen. We'll see the next exercise. You will train as if your lives depend on them. We'll train as if your life depends on it. So this is after the shooting has ended. So they gather together because yeah, they need to gather together and then give some debriefing before all that. So well, for me, I did not get that. But then again, I realized that it was a drill. It wasn't really. <laughs> an action because the first thing i thought was it was a drill this happened when this guy came out started fighting okay. akim actually mm. so listen what he says mm. what happened on the last night's drill so i got to understand like the whole fighting scene was not really fighting the shabab or the 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 terrorists but it was actually a drill of all the things like why why would you put it like that so uh those were other things that i noted uh, for example sneaking into shake's house and then the shooting scene the mix-up was not really it didn't match it didn't make sense i thought it was one thing but then it wasn't so the editors or rather the director or could the script could have been done some other way like you could have done with the shooting part first you finish and then you now focus on Faisal sneaking into uh, shake's house and this is where now you need to understand the sound of guns and uh and distinguish them so i'll i don't know whether i'll play this but uh let me just give it a try because <laughs> uh well i need to make a case here so so that's an eight sound of ak-47 let me play it again so if you can hear there's a different sound there of two two that is not an AK-47, that's uh, I've forgotten the name, but I'll AK-47. 
So you can feel like there is some heavy gun. The heavy gun that produces the heavy sound is the police, then the other one is the bandit. So the issue with that scene was the way the police were changing the magazine. They could shoot, I could listen to their gun, their gun shooting. About eight times, someone changes the magazine. I thought like a magazine holds 20 to 30 rounds of ammunition. So uh, it was the idea of changing the magazine was good, but uh, the sound <laughs> did not really match that they, it was time to change the magazine. So uh, like it was not enough shooting for me to feel like, yes, you need to change your magazine. So, well, those are for people like myself, but me. Not for, not for everybody. So this is, this is, <laughs> this is a scene I don't make, I cannot make sense out of it because why would you want to run behind two people who are holding a gun at you pointing a gun at you and the door is far ahead far there i'm standing here there's another terrorist standing there and you are sitting there and for you to reach the door you want to go through my back for for the director i think you i said you need to learn probably you know this but you messed up you would have had Bilal stand on the other side so that he could only have one terrorist uh blocking his door but not having Bilal having to run behind one of the terrorists who is holding a gun in the first place run behind the terrorist to go behind run again behind another terrorist and then get out of the door you don't do that you need to just plan, plan your movie and then block your characters accordingly because of the moves that you want them to make so having Bilal trying to run behind him and being being hit by the gun on his back was a no no you don't do that it's 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 abomination <laughs> let's say that so that was uh, wrong so that is one thing you need to take note of this is this is a terrorist is taking out his AK-47 and then shoots at the county commissioner who was following the bandits who had taken away the county commissioner. Now, this is where the, that is what you need to take note there. The bandits, let me call them bandits or rather the terrorists, sticking out an AK-47, shooting at them, and they still continue to chase after them. So this is where it went wrong because at this minute they stopped. The bandits stopped and then they were holding the AK-47 just outside the door and the county commissioner no not the county the chief with the driver stood there and looked at them and then the driver gets out with a what a glock a glock is a pistol in other words now let me just explain some few things to you here this is a glock and then the person you're chasing has an AK-47. So let me just bring to you something that you might be interested to know. So, so this is uh, the shooting. Okay, let me just give you facts and I'll, I'll put the video there. The shooting range for a Glock, that is a pistol, a nine millimeter, you know, the, the pistol is 50 meters. An AK-47 shooting range is 300 meters. That is an effective shooting range. 300 meters why would you chase someone when you are having a pistol and yet they have an AK-47 or rather let me say you don't understand what you have in the first place or rather let me let me say the director or the scriptwriter didn't understand how those things work so you cannot chase someone who has an AK-47 and then you have a pistol you don't do that that is that is not logical. If they have a pistol and you have a pistol, it makes sense. If they are showing you they have an AK-47 and you assess your situation, you have a pistol or rather a Glock, you don't you don't continue with the chase. Nanya told me, you'll get hurt in the first place. First of all, they have stopped. You are stopping and you're getting out with a pistol and then they see you and they drive away. That does not make sense. Any, any logical person who understands things to do with guns will not agree with that episode, uh, will not agree with that scene. Now, uh, let's continue to the, to the 
can I say, can we skip to the good part? So let me just go to the, this part now, where the, the, the car was shot at and it fell. So now, I'd mentioned already that, that uh, if someone has an AK-47 and you have a pistol, you need to stop the chase. Now this is a scene where this guy is holding a gun, pointing at the people who are chasing at them, not at a corner, straight. You still drive towards someone who is holding an AK-47 at you and you understand that the shooting range for an AK-47 is 300 meters, that is an effective shooting range, 300 meters, and you still drive towards them and you have an, a pistol. For me that looks like they were just about 70 meters close and they were shot at because it, it, it took like uh, three seconds for them, to, not even three seconds, just a short period before the car came and fell on next to the bandit so uh, that scene was not correctly executed could have uh, matched the guns so that you can yes playing field so the last thing i want to talk about is uh, uh the number six there was a new character after these guys who had, had been abducted again the chief had been abducted then there was a there was a scene that uh there was a guy who was introduced didn't make sense who they were why they People were acting like, eh, tumona nanya meibiwa, mechukuliwa na bandits, GWAT, county commissioner, and and, um, and the like. So, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to have someone like that and him going to the police station. It didn't make sense having him. But of course, uh, well, you have to make your story look juicy. So, it's okay. He was there. I didn't understand his role. Like, was he a chief? Was he an assistant chief? Was he a speaker? You know, nothing, nothing. But when he entered the scene, uh, you can see everybody just keeps quiet and then they explain the situation to him so i don't want to spend more time there so let me now finish with a juicy part and the juicy part is uh wait there's this part again i think they just missed out totally like a uh, new breaking news in swahili i think i know the difference between swahili and uh, english so should have corrected that by the way but the fact that even typing it you know not at the end in the same more spring type now this is uh the part that i need us to look at to as the last piece before i finish now this is the negotiation part so uh as as normal listen to this international partners to exert pressure on the other hand we have the option to also negotiate with the tourists. So we cannot negotiate with the tourists. Yes, you can negotiate with the tourists. That's what the government normally say. But uh, well, that's one person said you can negotiate with the tourists, and the rest say, no, 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 we can't negotiate with the tourists. That is not the policy of the government. But just a few minutes later, there is now this strange thing, and I would love to work with scriptwriters when doing some scenes like this. So listen, this is a Joint Operation Command Center. The phone rings. And then this guy goes, he's called Kimeto. This is Suleiman Kimeto. I'm here to negotiate on behalf of the government. What name can this I is Suleiman Kimeto. I'm here to negotiate on behalf of the government. What are you negotiating about? This, this scene did not really come out clearly because... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going high. I'm getting angry. Okay, but this is the thing. You are going to just pick a phone call like, hey, Niaje. Uh, I'm here to negotiate, or rather, any other day, uh, the next week, and you're not even the person on the other end has not introduced herself. I mean, this is a joint command, uh, this is a joint, uh, whatever, this is a joint operational, joint operation command center. If there is someone who is seated here, there's a phone next seated here, Kimeto is standing over there, and the phone rings, this guy doesn't pick the call, but Kimeto walks from there, comes and picks the call, and then starts saying, I want to negotiate. The way you would have put this scene as a scriptwriter, you would have let this guy pick the phone and say, Hey, Niade, this is the Joint Command Operations Center. Uh, how can I help you? And they're like, We are the terrorists and we want to see you what we're doing people. So someone will say, like, This is not, this is beyond my pay grade. And I was like, Yeah, just hold. And you'll call the negotiator to come if they're in the office. And most times, uh, negotiators are never in the office. But in this case, he was in the office. And he's the one who's picking the call, which is not okay. First, we have established that these are terrorists, they want, to they want something, and you negotiate with them and say, like, there's someone who is coming, so you just come and negotiate. And the first thing, 
they should have introduced to us that these people had already had contact before Kimeto goes and picks the call and says, ah, I'm here to negotiate. What are you negotiating in the first place? So that is the wrongest part that uh, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't buy. Uh, in negotiation, I mean, you just have to establish so many things before even a negotiator can even speak with them. And these are things called BATNA. BATNA is the best alternative to a negotiated process, uh, to a negotiated agreement. This is, uh, this is first establishing what you call uh, the bottom line in case you fail to reach an agreement with, this, uh, with, with the person, assailant, whatever we need to have your own partner so most people go for money like yes give give us this we give you money or secondly is you need to have a threshold threshold in which you need to reject an offer so i'm actually looking at time and i want to bring to you the last part so the last part while kimeto was speaking with the terrorists the other guys were tracing the locality of the locality of the caller so just listen we have narrowed down the location to an area of about a thousand square kilometers. What? An area of about a thousand square location to. Wait. We have narrowed down their location to an area of about a thousand square kilometers. We have narrowed down the location to an area of about a thousand square kilometers. Let me just give you the facts that Nairobi itself, Nairobi County, is 696 square kilometers. If you tell someone that you have narrowed down the location of the target at a uh, thousand square kilometers that is uh that's not logical guess what what kimeto says no, let me just play location to an area of about a thousand square kilometers yeah good give that info to the intel <laughs> good give that information to the intel a thousand square kilometers for real no you can't do that so uh <laughs> just <laughs> See you next time. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be de debunking the next uh, part of this uh, movie next time. So this is part one. So we'll look at part two next time. So thank you for watching to the end and thank you for the support. Make sure you subscribe and leave a thumbs up or leave a thumbs down. Any interaction, leave a comment. I think I'll appreciate any kind of uh, interaction with this movie. But uh, the last thing I'll just leave you is... Yeah, good. Give that to info to the intel. Give that info to the Intel. <laughs> I tell you what, you hear Foxton Media, they look at it and then give their comments about this debunk series. So it's been me, Maestro Official, your guy.